Hello and welcome back to yet another GCSE revision video. Now guys, as the school year rolls on, for those of you that are currently in year 11, you will be very well aware that by this stage, you are now currently in mock exam season. This is mock exams for your literature paper one and two exams, as well as mock exams for your all important language paper one and paper two exams. Now guys, as we are heading into mock exam season, if you're not already right in the thick of it, what I want to do within this lesson is to show you guys when it comes to language, paper one, uh, GCSE mocks, right? Let's say that you're sitting this for your upcoming mock exams in October, November, or even in the new year, right? In January and February, guys. When it comes to doing really well in these mock exams, remember that not only do you need to be able, when you're looking at the unseen fiction insert, to answer very perceptively uh, questions relating to language aspects of this insert, structure aspects of this insert, as well as the all important student statement, right? A student having read this it said, blah, 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 to what extent do you agree? But you also need to be able to demonstrate a really thorough awareness of really powerful terminology techniques. Okay, what I mean by that, and this is AO2, when you're answering question two, three, and four, you need to demonstrate an awareness of really powerful language techniques when answering the question, depending on which question you're asked. Always remember that question number two asks you to comment on some aspect of language. Equally, for question three, you need to show an awareness of good high-level structural terms. Now, within this lesson, guys, I wanna go over question number two, and also this bleeds into question number four, okay? Because remember that the student statement question, which is number four, is a blend of question two skills where you're talking about language and question three skills where you're talking about structure. But in this case, for question four, you're using those terminologies, techniques, and quotes to justify to what extent you agree with the student statement. So guys, what I want to do within this video is to show you guys really high level language techniques that you can use both in question two and question four of the language paper one exams. And guys, what I want to do is to actually show you when you're thinking about some common language techniques, things like alliteration, things like nouns, verbs, and adjectives, actually, it's very easy to just take it one step further and turn them into higher level techniques. And before I get into that, guys, don't forget, okay, especially for those of you guys that want to do really, really well in your mock exams, you want to get those high predicted grades so that you are able to apply for the AES and A-level topics that you have chosen, the ones that you're going to be pushed into. If you don't get certain predicted grades in English, make sure you join in my GCSE Sunday Masterclass this Sunday from 5 p.m. where I'm going to be going over the language paper one exam. This is the locked 2024 paper. And I'm going to be answering questions one and two this week, but also question three, four, and five in the following weeks, showing my students how to get really high marks in this particular paper. Because remember that this is the only AQA locked paper that schools will very be likely using for the mocks, okay? So guys, if you wanna do really well in your upcoming mocks, especially when it comes to knowing how to answer questions one, two, three, four, and five of the language paper one, this is the exam that students sat in the summer. This is the year 11s who did the 2024 exams. Make sure you join in my masterclass from 5 p.m. this Sunday, okay? This is the 27th of October. Well, I'm going to be covering and showing all of my students within that group class how to write top model responses for the 2024 exam. Okay, this is the locked exam that most schools are going to be using. So make sure you sign up. However, as I said, guys, obviously, as part of my masterclass, what I tend to do with my students is not only show them how to write model responses at a grade nine level. Okay, but also I walk them through how to look at techniques, common techniques to look for in the inserts and also how to apply them. But also when it comes to these common techniques, how to use the higher level versions of these techniques. And what I want to show you guys is three common language techniques that you can use in any language uh, question. So this is question number two, but also these techniques, you can apply them for question number four, the student statement. But what I will do, I will take it one step further. I will show you guys how to turn this, these very basic techniques into higher level techniques. Okay. And the three main techniques I want to show you guys how not only can you spot them in the language paper one exams, but also when you spot them actually be a little bit more specific and a bit more precise by using these higher level versions of these techniques. And these three techniques I want to talk about today are 
alliteration, imagery, and nouns, verbs, adjectives, okay? So by this stage, hopefully you're well aware that when it comes to the language question of the language paper one, question two exam, this is the GCSE language portion of the exam, you will always be expected to comment on language. And also in question four in the student statement, you are talking about to what extent you agree or disagree the student statement and examiners will be looking to see when you use a quotation, how the writer is using language to reinforce the point that you're making. Now, I'm gonna start off with the first very common technique, which is a language technique. And this is alliteration, right? And of course, just to be clear, Alliteration is a great language technique to point out, but it's actually a very common and very basic technique, right? Alliteration just simply means two or more words that start with the same letter. However, guys, I'd like to challenge you to do the following. When you're reading an unseen fiction extract and you spot alliteration, right, like the big bad bear, could you be a bit more specific? Could you use the following higher level alliterative techniques, okay? So transform alliteration into the following, one of the following higher level alliterative techniques. Either, when you spot alliteration, it's either, for example, going to be a plosive type of alliteration, if the words, the two or more words, start with the letters P, B, D, and T. So instead of saying, oh, um, the big bad bear has been used in this quote, and this is alliteration, instead what you wanna say is, the writer uses this, plosive alliteration to reinforce how frightening the bear is, for example, okay? Be more specific, use these higher level forms of alliteration. The other type of alliteration is what we call fricative alliteration. And these are words that start with the letters F, P, H, or V, okay? The sound that's made is F or um, V, okay? And again, if the two more words that you use in your example start with either of these letters, F, P, H, or V, well, you say that the writer uses this fricative alliteration, or alternatively, the other really good high-level alliterative term you want to become very familiar with throughout your mocks as you're commenting on language techniques for question number two is guttural alliteration. This is the final one, okay, which uh, letters that start with G, C, or K, you say that this uh, use of guttural alliteration and then you talk about the effect. Of course, guys, remember that the final form of alliteration is sibilance, the S starting sounds, okay? But that's very different to these other forms of alliteration. And I would like to suggest, guys, when you're practicing, okay, when you're practicing past paper questions, and indeed, obviously, if you join in my Sunday masterclass when I do answer the 2024 exam, and I go over how the writer uses alliteration, I will be highlighting one of these more higher level alliterative terms and show my students how then once you spot that, how to analyze that. That's the first common language technique. Alliteration is a little bit basic. Try and take it up one notch by using the other alternative high level forms of alliteration. In other words, either talk about the writer's use of plosive alliteration or fricative or guttural alliteration. That's the first common language technique that students tend to spot. I would like to recommend when you spot its alliteration, actually be a bit more specific, a bit more precise, okay? This then will impress your teachers when you then launch into your analysis. Now, the second very common type of language techniques that students are probably very aware of is the use of imagery, okay? Imagery is words that paint an, a, a picture in your mind if you close your eyes and you think of that word that's put on that piece of paper, okay? But instead of just simply identifying it as imagery, try and be more, more specific. Use these high level forms of language when you spot any use of imagery, okay? The first form of Im imagery is olfactory imagery. If the writer describes a pungent smell, for instance, anything that we can smell, or even a really nice fragrant smell, for example, from flowers, you will say, instead of saying, the writer uses this imagery, you will say, the writer uses olfactory imagery to talk about smell. Also, Instead of, for instance, saying the writer using onomatopoeia or sound imagery, you will say auditory imagery to talk about the sounds that are used in a text. Alternatively, talk about the writer's use of color imagery to convey the visual appearance of something. For example, if they're describing a golden sun or for example, the um, foggy mist, you're talking about visual imagery, okay? Color imagery. That's the second high level technique that you should look for and then comment on when you're thinking about imagery, when you spot imagery, try and be a bit more specific. Is it olfactory imagery, auditory imagery, or color imagery? And the third and final 
very common language technique is the use of nouns, verbs, adjectives, okay? So of course, again, these are really common techniques that you'll find in any text, right? You can say, oh, the writer uses this noun, um, the writer uses this verb, the writer uses this adjective. Okay, that's great, but perhaps, can you spot a pattern or a trend in say a group of nouns or a group of adjectives or a group of verbs that are somehow connected? And do they, for instance, belong to, right? So two or more nouns or two or more verbs or two or more adjectives. Do they belong to a semantic field or a lexical field? So for example, you might be reading a text, it's talking about flowers and it specifically mentions a rose, a daffodil and daisy. These three are nouns, but rather than saying, okay, the writer uses these nouns, you would say that the writer uses these nouns which belong to the semantic field, the category of flowers. Or you could alternatively say that the writer uses these group of nouns which belong to the lexical field of the category of flowers. Again, guys, remember that when it comes to your English GCSEs, not only are you answering questions and showing that you're able to write comprehensively about the random fiction text that you're presented with, but guys, remember that, especially if you're in year 11, you're writing your responses at a high level. What that means is you need to show some evidence of ambitious language and vocabulary, but also higher level language techniques. And as I said, guys, this Sunday from 4 p.m., I'm going to be showing, or rather from 5 p.m., I'm going to be showing my class how to answer the locked 2024 language paper one exam and how to apply these higher level techniques because guys, I think I've mentioned this before and I keep on mentioning this to my class every single Sunday. I strongly believe that every single student, if they apply themselves to practicing English with consistency, can get a grade seven. However, one of the ways to get a grade seven minimum in your GCSEs, in your mocks, as well as your final GCSEs is you need to become very familiar with these higher level techniques and then consistently apply them. And to do so, I would like to recommend also looking at examples of somebody who is able to apply them at a higher level. That's why I go over model answers. That's why I offer these model answers to all of my students who join in these classes, as well as lesson recordings for all of these lessons, okay? And so of course, guys, as I said, I would like to recommend get familiar with, instead of talking about alliteration, talking about these more higher level forms of alliteration. Instead of mentioning imagery, mention this more higher level form of imagery. Instead of only saying nouns, verbs, or adjectives, talk about whether they belong to a semantic field or a lexical field, okay? So that's really it, guys. And as I said, guys, as we are in mock exam season, I would really recommend guys, please make sure you get to practicing past paper questions and applying these high level techniques and high level words in your own practice. Thanks so much for listening.